So we're here today with Dr. Bridget McArdle, consultant in audio vestibular medicine at UCLH and president of the British Association of Audio Vestibular Physicians, and Dr. Rahani Omar, ST4 in audio vestibular medicine at UCLH. Thank you both very much for coming along to talk to us today. Um, so my first question to both of you is, what is audio vestibular medicine? Um, audio vestibular medicine uh, is the medicine of hearing and balance across the age ranges from birth to the grave. Um, a lot of people don't understand what we do in audio vestibular medicine. Uh, we become involved in the medical investigation and management of children uh, with um, hearing difficulties. They may have deafness, they may have auditory processing difficulties, uh, they may um, have a variety of issues also with their balance system, which may present as dizziness or um, unsteadiness. Um, in the adult population, there's a huge range of disorders that we um, become uh, involved with and manage. Uh, again, it, it relates to um, uh, investigating medical causes um, of deafness and associated comorbidities, of which there are many. And of course, as we become older and the population becomes older, there are significant issues about um, balance function and inner ear contribution to difficulties with um, maintaining balance or falling in the elderly. So there's a huge range of um, conditions that we manage across the age ranges. Um, how did you both get into this specialty? What interested you in it? How did you get drawn into doing audio vestibular medicine? I got to know about audio vestibular medicine quite late in my medical training. Um, I was training in neurology um, uh, before I got to know about audio vestibular medicine and it was during my time as a clinical research fellow doing um, an MD research um, a degree at uh, Queen Square that I came across um, the neurotology department as part of my, my research studies um, and I had a particular interest in language um, processing disorders um, and I ended up collaborating um, on one of my papers um, with Dr. Banyu who does research um, in neurotology at Queen Square and that was how I found out um, about audio vestibular medicine as a training specialty in its own right. Um, and I was drawn to the fact that um, it covered a lot of medical areas um, but required knowledge in a vast um, range of other specialties such as neurology and tied in very well with my experience um, up to that point and also with paediatrics, with ophthalmology and genetics and ENT. Um, and I liked the fact that it lended itself very well to less than full-time training because at the time I had family commitments and I was a mother of two young children um, and the prospect of um, working uh, out of hours was becoming less possible for me. Um, and that's uh, found out a bit more about it and I really, really um, found the conditions and the um, areas that are looked at within specialty very very interesting and intellectually stimulating. It's interesting uh, it was later on in my medical career too that I found out about um, audio vestibular medicine. Um, I'm trained as a paediatrician and I was working as a consultant paediatrician with a special interest in neurodevelopmental paediatrics and um, I suddenly um, was given responsibility for children's audiological services and started working in that service and really enjoyed that aspect of my job and I found out a little bit more about it and um, the training programme at the time and um, it's the best thing I've ever done. What new developments are happening currently within audio vestibular medicine that you think potential trainees would want to know about? Well, there are lots of um, small subspecialty areas within audio vestibular medicine. Um, as Dr. McArdle had um, mentioned earlier, so there are areas um, within adult audio vestibular medicine as well as within paediatrics um, and areas specifically looking at vestibular, um, the vestibular areas uh, of the specialty as well. Um, and there are lots of avenues for um, academic research um, which need looking into and I suppose there are lots of developments within genetics 
um, and how those link the genetic um, findings link in with clinical conditions seen in uh, audiovestibular medicine. Um, that is extremely exciting um, and we collaborate closely with geneticists in aiding um, the improvement of our diagnostic abilities. I think that's a very interesting area and very exciting. Um, and then within special areas in audiovestibular medicine, uh, there is a lot of research going on currently into auditory processing disorders, for example. Um, and uh, I don't know if Dr. McArdle might have anything further to add to um, other areas that are yeah, hot I topics. Think, <laughs> I, I think across the board, because we're a very small specialty, um, the, um, there's a huge amount of um, potential research in all areas from the newborn hearing screening program to development of services for children with balance problems. Um, <coughs> as um, um, Rohani has mentioned already, um, auditory processing uh, disorders are a big area of expansion within our specialty, but there are many other subspecialties as well, tinnitus and hyperacusis assessment in children and adults. And um, there are lots of comorbidities associated with deafness and, and hearing uh, pathologies, which um, can have a major impact on how that patient uh, is managed and for their future habilitation. So um, there, there are many, many areas that still need very active research uh, across the age range. And of course, as the elderly population um, expand, um, that whole group need a lot more, um, needs to be a lot more um, research looking at dementia and uh, the early links with hearing loss in that population and how we can define phenotypes for different um, types of dementia as well. So there's lots of different potential uh, research areas. One of the key things that I was very pleasantly surprised by um, on entering the training program was how well organised um, the training curriculum was um, and that it was fairly straightforward to know exactly what the competencies at every stage is throughout training and I found that um, very, very helpful. Um, I also was surprised and like, or I liked the fact that um, there are taught um, modules uh, for the basic sciences um, in audiovestibular medicine that will be new to many trainees going into the specialty. Um, and for those who wished to um, pursue a more academic career, um, that there is encouragement to do the MSc if they wanted to. I think the, the, the most wonderful thing about it is the amount of job satisfaction one gets from doing the, the, the role. Um, it's um, pretty important as a physician to be clear about what your role actually is and um, I think over time we've become much clearer about that because a lot of people don't understand what it is we do so lots of physician -y colleagues think we're audiologists and they're the scientists who provide the objective measurement of, of hearing or balance and they're scientifically trained. Um, but the, the, there's immense satisfaction in, in working with clients and families in discovering what, what the etiology of their background condition is, supporting them, making sure that um, they are seen by appropriate multidisciplinary team members, but also that um, we are there to be available if problems arise in the future, but it's not a continuous ongoing relationship, it's very much a one-stop or um, clear pathway driven service um, because the demands are huge. Uh, working with the multidisciplinary team of course is uh, the most enormous and um, gives the most enormous pleasure and satisfaction because one is constantly um, uh, looking for advice or challenging I ideas about hypothesis and diagnosis and uh, it it's very, um, very, very fulfilling role and families very much appreciate it. What would you say are the biggest challenges facing audio vestibular medicine at the moment? Um, I think there's three main challenges that we're facing. Um, one is um, trying to get the message out there about what we do, um, because some people have difficulty even pronouncing our <laughs> specialty, it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but it's really um, um, publicising that there are many areas um, around the country where there's no service at all, and how poorly those populations may be served. 
and uh, so it's trying to get messages across about our added value to commissioners and to um, patients and um, because many adult colleagues will see patients and um, who've been seen by five or six different specialists and the problem eventually gets sorted out when one of us sees the patient um, and that's very wasteful of resources and not very helpful for the patient journey so it, it's getting the message out there about us and trying to um, promote uh, creation of posts uh, in our specialty and that's the second big challenge the man per planning and uh, so we have had discussions with health education england about um, how we wish to expand our specialty by increasing training numbers and as a minimum having um, a physician in most of the regions around the country uh, and uh, that's ongoing discussion um, another area of challenge really is promoting the academic side of our specialty. So um, as Rahani was saying earlier, um, some of our curriculum is, is taught through MSc modules and we do encourage our trainees to become involved in research and to do post um, qualification or post CCT um, degrees if they wish to do so, um, because we would like to build up that aspect of our um, specialty. Finally, what advice um, would you give to a potential trainee in audio vestibular medicine? How would you persuade them to do your specialty? I would say to them that um, if they wanted to pursue a career where um, their clinical skills and clinical acumen and judgment um, would be highly um, useful and regarded, um, if they crave the intellectual stimulation of the challenges of clinical diagnosis um, in an environment where um, one could work uh, nine to five um, and lends itself very well to less than full-time training. Um, and in addition, if there are certain technophiles who like the idea of learning about audiological diagnostic tests and understanding what things like auditory evoked brainstem responses and uh, electronystagmography uh, involves and how to interpret them, then um, you know, this would be the specialty for you. And I would also say that um, there is so much um, job satisfaction to be gained in having that close dialogue and communication um, and follow up with groups of patients um, because many of these patients have chronic um, conditions um, and being able to manage them and in, uh, in the case of children, them and their families um, throughout their, their um, lives is very rewarding.